dreamer is someone with the courage to imagine futures that are better than the present and the boldness to chase after them. So the big question is this, how can dreamers like us create, develop, and execute a plan to bring our dreams into the present? That's the question. This show will give you the answers. My name's Cody James Cummings, and welcome to the Future Mapping Podcast. This past fall, I had the opportunity to marry my soulmate, which is pretty awesome. I highly recommend it. And we were on our honeymoon. We got married in the Dominican Republic and had a destination wedding there and got married in. So we got, so we got married in the Dominican Republic and then stayed there after the fact for our honeymoon. And I didn't take my phone. And, and those of you that or in the real estate world know that that's a wild move. It's the first time I had been away from my phone for, I mean, I had it, I didn't have a phone for two and a half weeks. So it's the first time I hadn't had a phone that long, maybe since the beginning of phones. And uh, man, it was amazing experience to just unplug and, and get to it, get to experience this, you know, once in a lifetime event uh, with, with my wife, my new wife. And I was, going through the process of just kind of considering the future and, you know, something, something that's as significant as a, as a wedding like that is a sort of a finish line, but also a starting line, you know, it's the finish line for your single pre-married days, but it's the starting line for the rest of your life. And it, and I had the opportunity to really spend some time and think like, what do I want to do and, and where am I going? And, and really that was the inception of this show, this experience. And I remember listening to a, uh, watching an interview on YouTube uh, between the, the two pastors, Stephen per Furtick, and he was interviewing T. D. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who I had already been a former fan of. I read a couple of his books, and, uh, and Bishop Jakes said something I thought was so, so smart, man. He said, he said that uh, he was in a room of CEOs there in Dallas that uh, was a part of some sort of city planning committee or something. And they were all talking about what they were going to do and what their goals were. And he said that one of the CEOs popped up, popped up and said, Hey, you know, we're all running businesses. We know that it's not so much as it's not so much about where you want to go. That's the problem. It's what you're willing to leave behind to get there. And so that's what I want to propose to you today. You know, we've spent, several episodes now dreaming, thinking up ideal futures, imagining what the world could be like if everything went perfectly, making our goal maps, choosing our definite chief aims, and all those things, and even discussing who we have to become to, to, to get to those dreams. But the dark side of that process is that if you're not who you need to be to have your dreams be your reality. It's because there are parts of you that you don't need in order to get to where you're going. And so that's the question that I have for you. You know, are your dreams important enough to you to leave behind those aspects of your identity, those relationships? those habits, those elements of you that are not in service of those dreams? Are you willing to leave those behind? The, the, the great and powerful Elizabeth Gilbert in her, I mean, I think what I, soul enriching novel, Eat, Pray, Love, she hands out uh, the what she calls the rule of quest physics, and I believe that this is this this holds exactly true in your journey toward your dreams, bringing those dreams into the present. She says, "Quote: If you are brave enough to leave behind everything familiar and comforting, which can be anything from your house to your old bitter resentments, and set out on a truth-seeking journey, either externally or internally." And if you're truly willing to regard everything that happens to you on that journey as a clue, and if you accept everyone you meet along the way as a teacher, 
And if you are prepared most of all to face and forgive some very difficult realities about yourself, then truth, then truth will not be withheld from you. End quote. If you are willing to let those elements of your identity that are not in service of your dreams die and burn away, then your dreams will not be with, withheld from you. That's what I believe. In Game of Thrones, Jon Snow, he's trying to figure out how to how to become a man, right? And Maester Aemon, I think his name was, told him, he said, you got to kill the boy. If you're going to become a man, you got to kill the boy. It makes me think about uh, the, the, the mythical creature, the phoenix, right? People love to look at myths and say, oh, isn't that cute, those stories? They're not just stories, man. They're they're descriptions of how to live, and the the symbol of the phoenix is represented representative of this process, right? Because the phoenix grows old and dies, and most of it's burned away, but then the essence of it is re remains and then emerges again. And I think that that's what the process, the evolutionary process that you go through, the unfolding that you go through to, to go from where you are to where you're going. I think that that's where this process happens, where you have to allow those elements of your identity, the relationships, the habits, et cetera, that are not in service of your dreams to burn away. And this can be really pa painful. This can be really painful initially because there are probably people in your life that have been in your life a very long time that are not, that are actively hampering your ability to go where you want to go. And you know who they are. As I was saying that, images are popping into your mind and you know them. It's hard, man, when they're family. It's hard when they're lifelong friends to say, you know what? You're not serving me and you're not, you're not serving the dreams that I'm going after. So I'm going to have to love you from a distance and, and cut you off. And create some create some space. So I so because the thing is, you only have what what's the what is the Dunbar's number, right? Dunbar's number, 150 people you can remember in a, in a at a given time, 150 close relationships. Well, when you've got when you have close relationships that are occupying space that are not in service of your dreams, when you get rid of them, when you push them away, then space is created for new relationships to come in that are in service of where you're going, right? If you have habits that are in place that are not in service of where you're going, when you get those gone, there's now space to replace those with new habits. So transformation is not a painless process, but it's a purposeful process. And, and consider your alternative. Your alternative is to stay where you are. Your alternative is to regress. Your, your alternative is to continue being who you've always been. But the problem is who you've always been is not good enough or else we wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be listening to this show because, because you're not happy. You're anxious. You're depressed. You're overweight. You, you're lonely. Things aren't as good as they could be. Are you willing to leave behind what you have to leave behind to get where you're going. That's what I want to leave you with today. What are you willing to leave behind to bring your dreams into the present? Before you leave, join the movement. Every Friday, I send out the Future Mapping Insiders new newsletter. It's filled with the interviews and the techniques and the habits that you need to chase down your dreams delivered conveniently to your inbox every single Friday. Sign up, connect with me. Let's go on this journey together. Number two, to join the movement, simply hit subscribe wherever you're listening. Just simply hit subscribe. That's all I need so that you start to, so that it's right there when you open the place that you go for your information. And finally, hit me up on the social medias, baby. My favorite is Instagram, right? But I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter all the good ones. Follow me, connect with me. Let's do life together, baby. And finally, you probably know by now that I make my living 
helping helping my clients build and manage real estate wealth, delivering the dream of home ownership here in Alabama. If you're here in Alabama, connect with me. I want to be your guy. I want to bring. I want to be the person that, that provides a world class service. But even if you're not in Alabama, you should know that I'm connected with something that's called Place, a tech platform, a community, a network of the top one percent of agents across the U.S. and Canada. If you need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please hit the link in the description so that I can guarantee that you have a world-class experience so that I can connect you with somebody that's either on my team or in my, in my world. Other than that, thank you for being here. It's always an honor that you would give me time to pour into you. Let's continue chasing your dreams down together. I love you.